Welcome back to Drafting with Mark and in this video we're going to be drawing this shape. Now the main focus of this one is going to be dealing with offsets. And as you can see I have a lot of dimensions on this and this is not the way I would normally do it. But in this video I'm going to show you how I would probably create this and then I will make a separate video when I dimension this showing you how I would exactly dimension it, right? Most of these dimensions are correct but the way I would do it I would not have this dimensions on it. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so in this video, what we're going to do is look at a deep dive into the offset command, right? You see that I have a center line here and I'm going to go ahead and highlight what that radius is and it's telling me that it is 80, right? The next one I need to know is going to be the 92 and the 100. And the reason I'm only highlighting these three is because the other two are just variances of it, right? So how do I figure out what this thickness is between here? Well, I have a few different ways of how I can do that. The first way is that I can take this outside radius and you see that that outside radius is measured at 20 minus this inside radius and that should give me a distance of 8. The exact same number through all of these, right? So that tells me that the difference between here and here should be 8, which is the 100 and the 92, which it is. What about figuring out what's the distance between this center line here and here? Well, you can look at this and that tells me that the radius. So this 80 should be 80 plus 12, right? Because that's that radius should give me that 92, which it does. And likewise, if I wanted to create and figure out how far this angle is, I would take the 80 and then I would add it to what this radius is here, which is sitting at 20. And that's how we get the 100. So that tells me that I can use the offset command and be really successful and alleviate a lot of this stress. So. Just doing the little math up in the front is going to help us out a whole lot. All right, let's jump over to AutoCAD. Let's go ahead and take care of our normal housekeeping here. We're going to go ahead and turn our grid off. Let's go ahead and turn the ortho on. And then I'm just going to check what running O snaps that I have turned on. And these are going to be the ones that I'm going to use. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by creating my circle that has a diameter of 60. All right, so let's start with circle, center diameter. I'm going to place this one at the origin, so I will type in 0, 0, enter. And then I need to type in whatever the diameter of my circle is going to be, in this case, which will be 60. Let's go ahead and center this. So I'm just going to hit the extent, and then I'm going to scroll out a little bit. All right, next I'm going to create that circle that's right on the inside of that, and that has a diameter of 40. So I'm going to go back to circle, center diameter. I'm going to type in 0, 0. And then I'm going to type in the diameter, in this case, which is 40. Just make sure that you're hitting enter after each one of these commands. So if this is your first time using AutoCAD, you're going to always have to hit enter to invoke or tell AutoCAD you're ready to go to the next step. All right, I'm just going to move this down. And now I'm going to create a circle that's located here above it. And this is where we're going to have to kind of look at the drawing and figure out exactly how far it is away. So how far is it from here to here? Well, if you're kind of looking at that center line there, that's going to be your tail to tell you how far you need to go. So the distance from this center point to this center point, or even from this distance from this center point to here, should be 80. So that tells me how far I need to go. So when I create this circle at the top, it's going to be 80 located in the Y direction from here. So I will go to Circle, Center Radius, and then I'm going to type in the coordinates, right? I'm going to go 0 in the x direction. So 0, comma, and then I want to go 80 in the y direction. So I'm going to type in the 80. And when I hit enter, it should create a circle immediately above it. And then I'm going to go ahead and tell it that the radius of this circle will be 20. All right. I'm not going to put the other circle on the inside just so I can show you some effective things to do with the offset command. All right. So the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is go ahead and define this circle here. Now there's a couple of different ways that we can do this. We can rotate this line over that degrees, but I'm going to show you a different way, right? So let's go ahead and figure out what I'm going to do. All right. So in this case, what I'm planning on doing is, is that I know where I'm located here. I have an angle that's located going this direction. And then I also know the distance. So it's going to be that same distance here is 80. 
The other part that I have to figure out, it tells me that it's a degrees of 40. Now you have to remember that AutoCAD does things rotating counterclockwise and the zero degrees is here pointing to the left. That means that if I want to start here, this is zero degrees, right? How do I get to my other point here? So I want to get to this one. So what is this angle here is what I need to figure out. Now this is one of those things that kind of take you back to, and if you understand this back, I think this was in elementary, maybe even middle school, but it's called complementary angles, right? And complementary angles means that this, as you can see, is a right angle, right? And so that tells me that these two angles here has to equal 90 degrees. Well, that's simple math here then. If I take the 90 minus my 40 degrees I already have, that should tell me that this angle here is gonna be 50 degrees, right? So I have those two numbers that I need. I have the degrees that I need, which is sitting at 50. And I do have the length that I need, which is that 80 that's sitting here at the top. So I'm gonna use both of those degrees and go ahead and place my circle. Okay, so I'm gonna go with circle, center radius, and then I'm going to type in what I need. So remember that anytime we're using polar coordinates, the length is first. So I'm going to go 80 and then I'm going to use the angle symbol. Remember, that's going to be the less than symbol. You're going to have to hold down the shift button and then hit less than. And then I'm going to type in my degrees that I already figured out. In this case, it's going to be 50. Once I hit enter, it's going to start that circle for me. It's the exact same size circle as my last one. So I'll just go ahead and hit enter. And now you can see that I can place that circle without doing the rotation. So if you understand kind of a little bit of what's going on here, that can kind of save you a step. That's kind of up to you on how you want to approach that. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create the circle that's located from this tangent point tangent point. As you can see from the drawing here, it has a radius of 100. Now we can use that radius of 100, but there's also something else that's happening here. This circle is also going to be touching the tangency of this circle here and this circle as well. Well, the easiest way of approaching that is also that th it has a quadrant right here. So if I draw a circle from this center and then I go to this quadrant, that's also gonna give me a circle with a radius of 100. All right, so just using the basic geometry that we know here, I'm gonna go with circle, center radius. I'm gonna start exactly at this center. So I'm gonna go and just touch one of my circles here and get the center point, click here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and go and click right on this quadrant up here at the top. Once I click that, you see that that is tangent to both of those circles, all right? Let me go ahead and trim this part off. So I'll go to trim, and then I'm gonna trim this portion off here, right? Next, let's see if I can go ahead and put the fillet that's located on this circle to this circle. Now this one has a radius of 30. So I'm gonna go to fillet, radius, I'm gonna type in my radius, which is 30, enter. Then I'm gonna select this circle here and then this circle. So it did create my fillet that I need here. Let's go ahead and offset this arc down to here. So this is another one of those things. On the drawing, it has that that measurement is 60 degrees, but you can do the exact same thing with two different ways. I can either draw a circle, like we did with the top from this center to that quadrant or we can use the offset command and whatever the distance is from here down to here is what I'm going to set my offset as. So I'm going to go from this quadrant and then I'm going to click on this quadrant and then I can offset this line going down. Either way is totally fine with you and by the way that is the diameter of that circle is what I'm offsetting. Let's go ahead and trim this. So I'll go ahead and use the trim command and trim off these portions here. All right, now to get the rest of this rather easy, I'm gonna go ahead and use the join command, right? So I'm gonna go to join, and then I'm gonna select my four objects here. Go ahead and hit enter. And now I'm looking for that it did convert those four objects into one polyline. That's super beneficial. Now remember that in the opening that I was talking about trying to figure out that gap. The gap that I'm referring to is the distance between these two points here. Now we figured that out that that is eight just by simply subtracting the 20 from the 12 or we can subtract the 100 from the 92. And one more option is the subtract the 68, well, yeah, from the, the 60 from the 68. 
So all of that is gonna give us a distance of eight, no matter how you cut it up. So all I need to do now is offset that shape a distance of eight. So looking at this, we're just gonna to go to offset. We're gonna set our distance, which is gonna be eight, enter. I'm gonna select this shape and then I'm gonna to click to the inside, all right? So that's a real quick way of solving all of that on the inside. Next, let's go ahead and create our other shape that's located along this side. Now to do this, all I'm gonna do is create a circle that is 70 from over here that has a radius of 20. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So from here, I'll go to circle, center radius, and then I'm gonna type in it's going 70 on the X axis, comma, zero on the Y axis. And once I hit enter, it should ask me for the radius. In this case, the radius should be set to 20. All right, another thing that I'm gonna do is kinda like what I did before, I can either draw the other circle there if I do the math and type in 130, or I can use the copy command and just select this circle and copy it forward. In this case, copy is gonna be a much easier solution here. I can also use grips. So if this is one of those things that you wanna kinda accelerate your keystrokes here, I can select this circle, select this center grip here, select the word copy on my command line, and aim this direction, and just type in 60, All right? Go ahead and hit escape. And that's one quick way of doing it without actually going to the copy command and things of that nature. Let's go ahead and draw a couple of lines here. So I'm just gonna draw a line from this quadrant over to this one. Likewise here at the bottom. So I'm gonna go quadrant. I'm gonna select this line here, going to this one. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and trim off these two lines on the inside. So I'll go to trim. Let's go ahead and get rid of those two lines. Now, like, unlike what we did before, I'm gonna go ahead and pre-select these lines, right? I'm gonna select this shape, and it's pre-selected now, and then I'm just gonna use the join command, right? So I'm gonna go to join, and what I'm looking for is that four objects are converted into one polyline, which is super beneficial. Now we're back to the point to where we need to figure out what's the thickness or the distance between here and here, right? Simply, just like we did before, that has the 20, and we have the 12. So if we subtract 20 minus 12, it should give us a distance of eight. So that offset here is gonna be eight. All right, so let's go ahead and use offset. Our distance, if we look on the command line, is already set to eight. So I'll just hit enter. And then I'm gonna click this shape and then click on the inside, All right? Let's go ahead and draw a line now. And I'm just hitting L enter, or we can come up to the actual line command. I'm gonna select this endpoint and then I need to run it into here. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. And what I usually like to do is take the line a little bit past it, and then do a left click here, and then go back and trim that line off. So I'll just go ahead and go to trim, take off that portion. All right, now we're stuck with the last part here, right? And this is gonna be one of those things that I'm gonna show you a, a, another little option here inside of the trim command. So I'm gonna go to, sorry, not the trim command, inside of the fillet command. I'm gonna to go to fill it. I'm gonna set my radius, which in this case is gonna be 30. Go ahead and hit enter, and watch what happens when I select this arc and then this one. You see how it's giving me a shape that looks like this? That's not the solution that I'm looking for here, right? So let's go ahead and undo this. And then I'm gonna go back to the fill it command. I'm gonna to go to radius. I'm gonna set it to 30, so it is 30. And now another function that I'm gonna add here is gonna be the trim option. So I'm gonna go to trim, and then I'm gonna set this to no trim. And when I do that, it's gonna allow me to go here to here without trimming off that portion. Now the only problem that you have with this is the next time you use the fillet command, it's gonna be stuck to no trim. So the way I like to remedy that is that I'll go immediately back to the fillet command, I'll go to trim, and then I'll tell it to trim, and then I'll just hit enter. So the next time I come back to this command, my trim will be turned on, right? Let me kind of zoom the extents of this a little bit and zoom out. And now you can see that we have completed this, you know, and I kind of made sure that I tried to explain every step that I went through with this, as well as giving you some blueprint reading or some kind of ways of calculating some of this stuff. And hopefully this kind of explained it and, and helped you better understand how to use the fillet command. So if you like doing these videos or maybe there's something that I didn't explain right, please leave me a comment 
And also tell me about the black background, if you're liking that or do I need to switch back to the white background? I would like to hear from you. Okay. So thank you for watching this one. And until the next video, I'll see you then.